Well, if like me, you voted for Brexit, you probably know by now that you're a stupid, ignorant, xenophobic, racist, bigoted moron who shouldn't be allowed to vote at all. You can read all about it in The Guardian. Yes, apparently we were misled into voting the wrong way because we're too thick to understand what we were doing and because we are driven primarily by fear, prejudice and hate. Isn't it nice to know who your friends are? They keep telling us too that if we voted for Brexit, or indeed for Trump in America, we're more likely to be uneducated, as if that's supposed to make us intellectually less capable and therefore somehow less worthy of a vote than the educated people, many of whom only go to university because they're unemployable. And when they come out with their useless arts or humanities degree that nobody takes seriously because every bloody fool has one, they're still unemployable, only now they're lumbered with a mountain of debt. Yeah, real geniuses. Imagine paying thousands for a degree, if you'll pardon the expression, in cultural studies or gender studies and being dumb enough to think you're educated. And then to think that that somehow entitles you to talk down to people who weren't stupid enough to squander their time and money. How moronic would you have to be? But even if you've got a proper degree in something real, like science, it doesn't mean that your political views are more valid than anyone else's or that you have superior political insight or knowledge. And if you think it does, well, then you are dangerous. And since we're throwing around the insults so freely here, the truth is we almost lost our democracy during that referendum thanks to ignorant fools who didn't know what they were voting for. Idiots who voted for the status quo because they couldn't be bothered to examine the issues and who still have no idea what they nearly threw away. Or imbeciles who voted to give up the democratic franchise of all future generations for selfish personal convenience, who think that giving up the right to make our own laws now and forever is a price worth paying for easier travel. These are the morons the establishment was counting on but there weren't quite enough of them, thank goodness. And talking of morons, most teachers voted to remain because they're all sucking on the EU tit. The European Union purposely floods academia with bribes in the form of grant money and stipends to give everyone in it a vested interest in promoting it so that it can get its propaganda into children nice and early before they're capable of evaluating and rejecting it. You know, the way they do with religion. Did you ever hear a bad word about the sacred European Union from a teacher? Of course not. Well, theoretically, yes, it's possible, but in practice, it's about as likely as getting a third world rapist deported from Europe. So we can't really blame young people who voted against their own interests to stay in when for years they've been force fed the lie that democratic sovereignty is fascist and racist. As recipients of a progressive education, they simply haven't been taught to value the foundational principles of a free society. So many of them genuinely had no understanding of what was really at stake. One day they'll realise how irresponsibly they've been miseducated and how close they came to being conned out of their birthright. Of course, in the event, they didn't quite get conned, despite their own best efforts, because although most people within the progressive bubble voted to remain in the dying European Union, those of us who still have bullshit detectors that work voted to leave, and we had the numbers as per the rules, so we won. At least in theory, because two years on, nothing has changed, except now we're being told that we live in a divided society, riven by anger and bitterness, because we won. It's our fault for winning. If only we'd voted the correct way and surrendered, we wouldn't be divided, and then all those angry people who've been busy insulting and cursing us for the last two years wouldn't be calling us ignorant, stupid, xenophobic, racist, bigoted morons at all. But of course they would, because that's who they think we are, and we know that now. We've had two years of relentless abuse in which to get that message, and I'd say we've got it loud and clear. We got it on the very first day, to be fair. As soon as the Brexit result was announced, the progressive media filled up with public intellectuals telling us how ashamed they were to be British, and the rest of us said, yeah, we're ashamed you're British too. But they weren't listening, because they never do. 
We've made it clear time and again that we voted for a free, democratic, sovereign nation on good terms with the rest of the world. But they keep telling us that we voted for insularity, bigotry and hate because that's what they want to believe about us. And that's why even now, every day in the progressive media, you'll find somebody complaining about xenophobic Brexit and the racist ignoramuses who voted for it. Maybe they think we're not listening or that we're too busy trying to figure out how to tie our own shoelaces to pay attention. Or maybe they assume they can just talk over us as if we're dumb animals. But we are listening to every word, every insult, every slur, every smear, every deliberate misrepresentation and every disgusting slanderous lie. We've been listening carefully for the last two years and we are getting educated. You better believe it. We understand now very clearly how despised we are by the political class and by the wider progressive intelligentsia who have shown that they really do regard us as a lower order whose opinions shouldn't count. Before the referendum, oh, they were quite happy to accept a result that they fully expected to go their way. They kept telling us this is a one-time vote, the final decision, in or out. This is it. But then they lost and everything changed. Suddenly it was only advisory, it didn't really count, and all the abuse and all the hostility from the campaign intensified into full-blown hysteria, especially among the Guardianista class of metropolitan progressive dimwits and ivory tower academics who always think they know best for everyone. You know, the educated people who've all been educated to vote the same way and who dominate the education system and who dominate the media and who filter all the news. The privileged minority who behave like a majority and who feel entitled to steer the whole of society from inside their little progressive bubble as if by divine right. These are the people who have divided us. All the anger and all the bitterness is coming from them and it's being stoked daily in the media by them. The people who won't accept the result and who are now pushing for a second referendum. Of course, we all know that there are plenty of people who voted to remain who now want Brexit to happen because they can see the bigger picture and they know that for the government to renege on this would be like punching a hole in the bottom of a boat. No democratic vote in Britain would ever be respected again. If our vote doesn't count, then neither does yours. And we all know where that leads. But try telling that to the people who for the last two years have dismissed the result and have also impugned our motives and demeaned our intelligence for voting as we did while running through a whole lexicon of insults, small-minded they called us, irresponsible, fearful, insular, blinkered, backward, parochial, jingoistic, xenophobic, bigoted, ignorant, racist, little Englanders they called us and they're still doing it now. Some public intellectuals and failed politicians are so angry at our temerity in voting for our interests and not for theirs that even now they're openly seething with rage. I'm surprised one or two haven't spontaneously combusted. But I can give them all, this entire class of supercilious toe rags, a far better reason than Brexit to be angry angry with themselves, that is. Because now that our self-appointed political superiors have demonstrated so clearly how much they despise us, they must know in their hearts that things between us will never be quite the same again. Surely they can sense the political sea change that they've helped to initiate with their hysteria now that they've got the attention of the people they mock and deride. Surely they can sense that in future, many of us who were fairly uncommitted politically but who made a point of voting in that very important referendum will now be much more actively focused on politics and in particular on voting against them and against everything that they believe in at every opportunity as a matter of principle and as a matter of urgency in order to minimize their poisonous and destructive influence on our society because we understand now who we're dealing with and what a lucky escape we had in voting for Brexit and we understand how important it is for the free and healthy society that we want to live in, that people with their patronizing, autocratic, elitist and deeply anti-democratic mindset are dangerous and should be kept away from any form of political power over others. 
That is what democracy is for, to protect us from people like them, from people who insist that they know best, from people who have shown beyond any doubt that they cannot be trusted to honour a vote and they cannot be trusted with our freedom. And with all the condescension and the totally uncalled for insults and smears, they've revealed to us their true inner ugliness, so they've lost not only our trust, but our respect. Consequently, they've lost that upper hand that they always took for granted, and they've done it all to themselves. But we're the morons. Yeah, right.